Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome to Paul's Political Program. I know the issues and problems facing America, but I don't know how to solve them. We the people do. Hopefully together, we'll come up with solutions that will pass as laws. The format on my show is, I state an issue or problem and discuss it with a possible solution that doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with it. You can post your solutions and comments under the YouTube video. I hope that's simple enough. The name of today's program is The Truth Behind the Federal Reserve Bank Separation of Bank and State Part 1. The Federal Reserve Act, which was enacted December 23, 1913, is an act of Congress that created and set up the Federal Reserve System. The central banking system of the United States of America and granted it the legal authority to issue Federal Reserve notes, now commonly known as the U.S. dollar, and Federal Reserve bank notes as legal tender. The act was signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail right now on the background, but just enough for the people that aren't aware of it. One website that you can read about the history of the Federal Reserve is federalreserveeducation.org. Background, 1791 to 1811. Congress established the first bank of the United States. It was the largest corporation in the country and was dominated by big banking and money interests. Many agrarian-minded Americans, uncomfortable with the idea of a large and powerful bank, opposed it. When the bank's 20-year charter expired in 1811, Congress refused to renew it by one vote. 1816 to 1836, Congress agreed to charter the second bank of the United States. But when Andrew Jackson, a central bank foe, was elected president in 1828, he vowed to kill it. His attack on its banker-controlled power touched a popular nerve with Americans, and when the second bank's charter expired in 1836, it was not renewed. For nearly 80 years, the U.S. was without a central bank after the charter for the second bank of the United States was allowed to expire. After various financial panics, particularly a severe one in 1907, some Americans became persuaded that the country needed some sort of banking and currency reform that would, when threatened by financial panics, provide a ready reserve of liquid assets and furthermore allow for currency and credit to expand and contract seasonally within the U.S. economy. December 23, 1913. President Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into law. It supposedly stood as a classic example of a compromise, a decentralized central bank that balanced the competing interests of private banks and populist sentiment. The Critic's Argument The Federal Reserve Bank of New York follows an agenda favorable or beholden to major private financial institutions apparently kowtowing to the political wishes of the executive branch of the Federal Reserve Banks outside New York are ultimately serving the interests of their Wall Street constituency. Many critics of the Federal Reserve System have treated the system as centralized de facto in New York, with the other regional banks being mere window dressing to disguise the domination of halt finance over the banking cartel and the executive branch's almost proclivity to promote bailouts of the big banks suggests that the executive branch may be carrying water for private political power brokers behind the scenes. Questions. Should there be a complete audit to start with? 
Should the United States return to the gold standard? Why and when did the United States go off the gold standard? Is there a connection with the United States being taken off the gold standard and the truth behind the Federal Reserve Bank? These questions will be part of the discussion on part two of the truth behind the Federal Reserve Bank separation of bank and state. Solutions and comments are welcome. Thank you and have a great day.